We know diabetes is a disease that's, that's largely caused by our own behaviors. And if you're going to effectively treat the disease, you have to address the behaviors that are causing it in the first place. Cognitive behavioral therapy offers promise as a form of treatment that can help patients change behaviors in a sustainable way. The problem with cognitive behavioral therapy in the treatment of diabetes is it's not scalable. Traditionally, it's delivered one provider to one patient at a time. Uh, it's expensive. It takes multiple visits, typically over four to six months. What we've done at Better Therapeutics is created a completely digital form of cognitive behavioral therapy that can be prescribed by physicians and used by patients anywhere uh, so long as they have a smartphone. One of the things I struggle with as a clinician is that patients come in and they say, hey, what about this app or that app or I'm tracking that? And without rigorous data, I really don't know what to tell them. You know, I, I say, if you like it or if it works for you, fine. But we really need the rigorous, you know, randomized controlled trials to understand what these do, what their sustainability is, what the safety is. And that's what really impressed me about Better Therapeutics. Prescription digital therapeutics are a special class of digital therapeutics that are clinically validated. They will be approved by a regulatory authority, for example, the US FDA, and they're prescribed by a physician for their patient as a part of a treatment regimen. BT001 is our first product focused on treating type 2 diabetes. This product is in the midst of its uh, pivotal trial right now. It's a trial uh, that includes about 700 patients from throughout the United States. Uh, we're conducting that study over 180 days. These patients have had diabetes for quite some time. So these are complex diabetes patients. Now the results show us already at 90 days of treatment, a clinically meaningful and highly statistically significant effect. We saw about 45% of patients in the BT001 group reach a clinically meaningful threshold versus about 27% in the control group. And on average, these patients lowered their A1C by about 1.1%. So a very significant change in a large proportion of people that were exposed to the app. They were able to show a reduction in A1C of the magnitude that we would hope for for drugs, one that was very safe. And this was by allowing people to take control of their disease. So it's not just the, the digital therapeutic, but the mechanism is proven. The app utilizes behavior science principles um, in presenting it in a very simple, intuitive, and quite delightful way, actually. We also utilize machine learning and um, artificial intelligence to personalize the treatment for the patient. So in this way, what we're doing is we're allowing the patients to progress through the treatment at a pace that works for them. And so it builds confidence as they're going through it, and that confidence then ultimately leads to improved outcomes. When I work with patients in the clinic, you know, there's a sense of, you know, maybe fear and also guilt. Like I'm being told I have a problem and then I have to take these drugs to fix that problem. And, you know, often people say, do I have to take this for the rest of my life? And, you know, there's a sense of, um, I think, frustration that, that this is sort of happening to me. When you reframe it as this is a preventable or even curable disease and we can empower you to address the root causes, I, I think that really much ch changes the, the discussion a lot. One strength of our trial was the patient population that was studied. So this was a nationally representative sample, but it also included a very strong representation from women and minority groups that are traditionally not represented in clinical trials. About 40% of the population was non-white, about 40% did not have a college degree. Many of the participants were uh, in low income uh, neighborhoods. So these are, are patient populations that are traditionally underserved, have uh, poor access to medical care, have worse health outcomes. So to see positive primary endpoint results in these patient populations is very encouraging because it means this is a potential tool that could benefit those patients who really need it the most. We see the potential to create a new standard of care for type 2 diabetes and other cardiometabolic diseases. A standard of care that begins with behavioral therapy delivered as a prescription digital therapeutic. Gone with the old methods that did not produce results and placed an enormous quality of life burden on patients and also a daunting resource burden on our entire healthcare system. We are reimagining a future of patient care through better therapeutics.